Magandang araw mga kaprekto. Welcome to Prekto Pilipino. Our episode is a follow-up of last week's episode. Diba? Sabi nga ni Mr. Willie Arcilla, you remember his, the gist of his of his sharing last weekend was ano, sabi niya, do not sell to the poor but buy from the poor. So today we have um, a very happy na perfect follow-up to last week's episode. We have Mr. June C of uh, D- DYC Food One World Delhi Food Corporation, and then we have one of his uh, partners, one of his um, social enterprise guy. Perfect. This is the this is the person na pinag-usapan ni Mr. Willie Arcilla last weekend. No, si Mr. Jamir Ocampo. He founded ano Discovery Tea Craft, and one of their brands is Chaalaya. No, and it's a social enterprise, and they now supply One World Delhi with different products. So, June Jamir, welcome to Project the Filipino. Magandang hapon po, mga kaproyekto. Okay. June, welcome. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Magandang hapon, Father Tito and all the uh, fans of Father Tito. Ako na isa <laughs> doon. <laughs> so, maraking karangalan to be here to uh, exchange ideas with all the listeners. Maraming salamat po for inviting yeah, and, us. And, and maybe just a background for everybody who's watching us and listening to us. For those who can see the background of, of June, uh, that is One World Delhi in uh, in San Juan. No, uh, you should go and visit. It's not only is it a deli store; it's a restaurant. It's, it's almost everything about food. No, okay. So June, uh, Jamir, you know, we in Proyecto Filipino, because we want to share stories and hopefully inspire people. No? Let me just give a background why the title Proyecto Filipino. It's, we're actually a civic show. No and uh, civics education. But ang goal namin is to encourage people to build our nation. Kaya, kasi it, it, it was inspired by Leller Claudio. No? His, from his favorite author, sabi niya, building a nation is a project. No? And so, part of it, very much a part of it is, of course, our economic side and here, social enterprise. No? So maybe you can share your own story of, of, of your own project. June, if you don't mind, maganda yung kwento mo eh. Interesting yung kwento mo, your ship no into into this whole world of ano of encouraging you know, yeah. enterprise. Thank you. Um, actually, uh, yung yung journey ko dito sa food uh, really started from a crisis. No? So in 2016, you know, I went through quite a lot of challenging times in my own business, personal life, and uh, because of that crisis, nakaroon ho ako ng clinical depression. No? So that was a time, it was a very dark moment for me. I was uh, seeing doctors, uh, psychiatrists, taking medication. And in that process, as I got a little bit better, I was encouraged to seek therapy. So marami ako uh, tinatry ng mga therapies. Pero parang hindi masyado nag-work sa akin until one day nanonood ako. Kasi hindi ako lumalabas at that time. Nanonood lang ako palagi ng Netflix sa bahay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, may anxiety ako lumabas, so nanonood lang ako ng Netflix. So then, meron ako nakita isang show na food show, Salt, Acid, Wheat, and Pat. Kung napanood ko, sabi ko, hindi pala mahirap magluto. So, binili ko yung book, binasa ko, and then I started this journey of cooking. It actually became the healing process for me. Uh, I spent almost a year and a half just cooking food, learning how to do it, um, and in the process, inviting friends, family to my house where I would cook for them. And eventually, I felt good when I saw them enjoy the food I was cooking. So, yung journey na yun, I also realized na since I really don't have a talent for it, sumusunod lang ako ng mga recipe, na the better ingredients I use, mas magandang freshest quality of foods that I use, mas masarap at mas madaling lutuin. No? You don't, don't have to do so many complicated things. Basta magandang quality at very fresh yung uh, ingredients mo, masarap palagi ang pagkain. And when I became well na, nag ako after a year and a half this journey, sabi ko sa sarili ko, I want to do something no? parang to share yung experience ko of how we should know where our food comes from. It's very important. We should care about where our food comes from uh, because it really has a very big impact on the quality of the food we eat. And secondly, also on the nutrition and the health that 
uh, you we derive out of the food we eat. No? And that whole process inspired me to create to me, One World Deli, uh, which is a store where we promise our customers when you come here, you not only buy things, you discover a lot about the food that you buy. Where is it coming from? See, no farmer, see, no producer. How do you prepare it properly? And then you can even experience it here. Kaya sabi na ni Father, meron din kayong dine-in. Where pwede parang paluto. Pwede kang, pag may makita kang maganda dito, meron kaming chef dito. Nakausapin mo, oh, paano ba ito lulutuin? Tuturuan ka niya. And even if you want to have it cooked there para ma-experience mo, uh, they, they'll, you know, we have a, we have a cook, uh, cooks who can do it. And then we can even share the recipes you know, with, our, with our customers if they like it. So this is the whole journey of really parang being a place where we discover food. Tapos, um, as we were going through this, of course, at the beginning, puro imported yung sourcing namin. And then as we built a following na, sabi namin, eh, hindi naman pwede puro imported. We have to, to help also local producers. So, we started looking for suppliers. Karamihan ng mga talagang passionate na mga producers, karamihan eh, maliliit na mga negosyo. Mahal na mahal nila yung ginagawa nila. Talagang very passionate sila, sila sa ginagawa nila. Whether fisher folks sila, farmers, or People like Jamir, no, who has his own story to tell, mm-hmm. na very passionate siya doon sa paggawa ng tea niya at paano niya tutulungan yung community. So, isa ito sa success story namin that when we started working with Jamir, uh, his product became very popular in our store. Tapos naman, hindi naman siya makakope sa production niya <laughs> kasi maliit na. <laughs> so, lumal- lumalabas tuloy, uh, nagtulong na lang kami to invest in his business para lalaki din ang production niya no at mo, mm-hmm. hindi naman sa more sa pera but more sa pagtulong in terms of uh, also enabling Jamir and his team dun sa mga management uh, practices ano yung mga networking paano sila mag-connect sa mga supplier you know and all that and, and this is a success story which i'm sure Jamir can tell a better version of it than me okay thank you June June will get back to your story will tell Jamir's story para we can kwentuhan na tayong tatlo after, di ba? Okay. Jamir, you want to share your journey also? Yes, Father. So sa akin, may three part, no? So part one, part two, part three. Part three, and si Sir June. So yung <laughs> yung part one, uh, basically, how I put up this social enterprise way back pa po ng 2011 when I got back to Philippines. So mahaba pong kwento, but I I nearly lost, I was, I, get back, I got back to Philippines in 2011 from my scholarship in Japan. And of course, doon tayo naging more, more passionate about tea and also mm-hmm. tea culture. But uh, ang story doon, I, I nearly lost my scholarship because naabutan ako nung Ondoy Typhoon. The mm-hmm. night before na lumipad ako ng Japan, I nearly lost it. And so, mm-hmm. I just saw the Philippines in full, especially Manila, in full brown mud. No? Mm-hmm. So, ang sabi ko necessarily ko when I go back to Philippines, para I want to work on typhoon rehabilitation kasi really just left personal mark. So when I went back to 20, about 2011 here, it so happened that I ended up working in my development work. I was working with a, a human rights work at the time, fresh graduate po from, from Japan. So what was your course in Japan, Jamie? I, I, I did environmental management, sir, uh, focus okay. on uh, environmental economics. Mm-hmm. So my wrong idea on business, then I got to be more passionate about, about tea. Pero wala kasi talagang green tea sa Philippines. So, so, but what we have is the rich herbal traditions. Okay, mga pito-pito, yung mga banaba ng mga lolo-lola ko, mga uncle ko. We have such rich herbal traditions. So, I ended up working in in a resettlement community in Pas- Pasig. So, ito po yung mga urban poor communities undergoing relocation. Mm-hmm. So, it so happened that the part two of that is when I joined a, a social enterprise competition and I I was just idealistic because I, I want to do something when I met these resettlement communities who were relocated to Kalawan, Laguna. That's about 20, 2011. And I, I got a seed capital of just 100,000 to put up a livelihood project. So ito po yung malaking resettlement area sa, sa Kalawan, Laguna. Actually, the Where Don that, Bosco. That's ABS-CBN Foundation. Yes, there's ABS-CBN, there's the Don Bosco Fathers. Yeah. So uh, 
it's just me being passionate about tea, pero walang tea, then we, I realize may mga herbals, like mm-hmm. lemongrass, pandan, na it just grows everywhere, kahit sa kanal natin, pero we're not able to pay attention. Uh, then I put up, I pitched that that that, that kind of uh, idea of really come up using our herbals. And then, then that's where it started growing, then umabot yung pandemic, of course, our we started supplying restaurants and cafe where we were badly affected by the pandemic. But mm-hmm. uh, during the pandemic, it so happened that there's one this one guy who eventually tried our tea in one of the restaurants. So it so happened to be Sir June at that time. <laughs> Kumalala mo Sir June na try mo yun simply Thai restaurant, yung lemon ginger na natsaka natin. Pero pandemic pa yun. We all went down with the pandemic. There's no restaurant. There's no retail store. But I believe Sir John at that time, there was really like an alignment of his vision as trying to recover from the pandemic and then Sir John having a renewed vision. Pandemic pa yun, 2019 eh. 2019, sorry, sorry, 2020, 2020. Yeah. And uh, I think that that went aligned because um we eventually, I got to meet Sir John in a Zoom meeting and he shared his vision about coming up with premium local companies support and also building up an ecosystem of support towards uh, local products and us being you know, a social enterprise grounded really with the livelihood project. So currently, po, we are supporting around, we are women's livelihood project. We are supporting mothers and, and women of typhoon victims in Kalawan, Laguna. That's where we started. And now because of this partnership that we, we are able to have not just an investment, but also market and mentoring with the Tao Foods Corporation under the leadership of Sir June. We're able to start scaling up the business in terms of distribution and at the same time scaling up more impact. So we're able to support more communities now through our herbal livelihood in Mindoro with the Mangyan communities and also we're now trying to develop also supporting forest conservation communities through our herbal farms in Palawan. So tumalaki na rin po yung impact ng ating social Okay. Actually, we are not even your largest customer now, Jamir, di ba? Maybe you not can yet, sir. to father, oh. sino na yung mga... Yes. So actually, we are actually fortunate that even yung mga big businesses dito, they already try to consider social procurement on how they link their procurement to the, to the livelihood mission. Especially, we have to shout out to Bose Coffee, sir, di ba? So si Bose Coffee, they have been using our teas for almost 10 years na in coming up with uh, unique iced teas mm-hmm. and also hot teas. They're using it in all their stores. So same strategy with One World Deli. They have been using our herbal teas, not just for hot tea, but also for cold drinks and cocktails and mocktails. Para creative, yung, yung usage of our products. Also, SM Cultura. SM Cultura has been our biggest retail distribution for the nearly a decade na din po na supporting. So we are quite fortunate that even big companies now are aware of supporting local for, you know, supporting local livelihood through their purchases. Yeah. Jamir, more or less, how many families or persons do you, do you mm. in quotation marks, employ or give livelihood to? So give currently them? we have three communities po. Uh, ang pinaka-flagship community na we really started to have a small factory and big established farm is in Kalawan, Laguna. There are about, there are about 30 women tea makers and also around about 80 herbal farmers in this community po na we are supporting. So, iba pa yung count natin pag sa Mindoro naman, uh, around 10 tea makers and around uh, about uh, about 30 po na mga indigenous people farmers. Okay. And then and then what what are the ano what 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 is the room for expansion? Kasi uh, as 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 June said earlier, you cannot meet the demand. Yes, of course, sir. Uh, we're both a social enterprise, so we also want to balance both profit and impact, right? Mm-hmm. So as we try to scale up and be more ambitious with our growth, with the, yeah, that's uh, my job with Sir Juna uh, as my mentor and also also as my uh, my board chair. So we were trying to, of course, penetrate as many restaurants and cafe and retail product, not just in the Philippines but hopefully abroad. So mm-hmm. um. So currently, uh, of course, pag peak months na ubusan po talaga kasi then we are also aligned with the growth of Tao, Tao Foods Company or PYC Corporation as PYC also has this growth vision of sharing the advocacy of good food. So as many stores are also increasing, the demand is also increasing with, with One World Daily, with Bose Coffee, also with SM Cultura. Hence, we're trying to source more and more 
local farmers you know, who can actually produce also. And because we're also now a certi FDA certified product, we want to make sure from, you know, it's clean sanitary sourcing and also to the manufacturing. So this is where also the social enterprise program comes in under the support of a PYC where we try to train and develop more herbal farmers and also competent uh, tea making facilities. Okay. June, when, when June, with the, the support that you give, I guess it's, it's to upgrade the quality, the production, the packaging, everything, no? So then June, complete, no? Pati, pati yung marketing and then the, the retail and then the, the distribution. You, you, you guide them also through that. Yes. Um, well, of course, Jamir, we we don't manage the business. No? Jamir, we leave okay. it to Jamir to manage the business because we, we, we believe that he is the best person to manage the business. What we provide is uh, mentorship and network. No? Kasi okay. kadalasan, kadalasan sa maraming negosyo na nagpapalaki, ang pera, syempre, kailangan din nila. But that's not the most important thing. Studies will show... But the most important, the most important two things that new entrepreneurs need to be able to grow their business is really sort of a mentorship, meaning yes. that they have the support of experienced people. Because minsan, nakupisa ka ng negosyo, uh, yung finance mo, yung paggawa ng financial statement ko hirap ka kasi wala, hindi ka maka-afford ng CPA. So, uh -huh. paano yan? Chicken or egg yan? Di ba? Kung wala ka naman magandang financial reporting, mahirap din magplano. So, the benefit of, let's say, having a mentorship program like us is we provide the um, financial support. We have our accountants group to help Jamir when he started uh, explaining to them ano ba yung financial reporting, paano ba gagawin, how to analyze it. So, tinuturoan namin yung team nila and then we also provide the backroom support. Yung organizational planning, di ba? Kailangan rin yun. Tapos yung networking naman, importante rin yun kasi oh, si Bose Coffee, kinala ko yung may-ari. So, I reach out to them say you can you help support um, this all. But, you know, ang, ang malaki, ang mga companies naman like Bose, they are willing to support but of course, they will want to buy. They, there are always two things that concern them. Number one is the quality of the product, consistent ba yan? And second, mm -hmm. reliable ba yan? Kasi when they start buying, they will market it. Eh kung, kung mag click yung produkto and then suddenly kailangan nila ng marami hindi ka naman makakasupply kasi kulang ka ng, yeah. ng production planning or that then sila din maapektuhan so having the benefit of you know a big brother like us also mm -hmm. helps um, helps gain confidence with these large uh, companies na okay if they're being supported by this group uh, you know we know the owners um Malamang, we can rely on their data and so we can assure you of continuity and supply and consistency in quality. So there is, it's, it's, it's usually um, these things that are always hardest for a lot of new, new businesses no? to, to scale yeah. up. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you other stories also of other local producers like Jamir, not just even in manufacturing, but even in farming or fisher folk communities. Now we're very proud to say natulungan rin namin to scale up their operations and their business, which later maybe we can we can take up as as we go with the Yeah, show. yeah. And, and June, June, maybe just to no, no, just to also uh share with people your concepts of one world daily. I because very, very striking that you said you started diba, with a lot of the nice imported ingredients, no, but but if people walk into one world daily and daming local la, no, local ingredients, no. Maybe, um, how is the response to that? Pa ah, kamusta yung risk? Kasi medyo, of course, yung namimili sa'yo, medyo mga middle to high, ano, di ba? And again, no, I just want to reiterate yung sinabi ni Willie Arcilla last weekend, uh, the, the, the corporation should not sell to the poor. Yun yung sabi Jamir ni ano last week. Eh. But they should buy from the poor so that the poor will have more purchasing power to buy quality to buy. products, no? Kasi yung, yung, yung advocacy John ni, ni Willie Arcilla is let's stop selling sachets. Hindi yung tingi-tingi. Di ba? Kasi mas, mas napapamahal yung mahihirap and we're the biggest polluter pa of the, of the, in the world with these sachets. Sabi niya, if we give them livelihood, they're able to buy in bulk. Hindi na, garapon-garapon na hindi sachets. Ano? So, 
June, you're, you're, because your model and, and what Jamir is doing is exactly what Willie was saying last week. No, We must so, buy from the poor. No? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I... I mean, this is my own personal ano lang, points of view. Maka others may have others. But mm. when, you, when you deal kasi with the poor, it, ne- it necessarily, we can imagine that they are small producers. Wala yeah. sila capability to produce in large quantities. Diba? So, I always liken it to Italy. Na? Sa Italy, dami nilang mga small producers. Pero mayayaman sila kasi quality yung Nangawa. mindset nila. So, ang ganda ng produkto nila na kahit konti lang yung pinuproduce ng, small, ng cheese maker or ganito or this guy, ang taas naman ang halaga ng price niya. So, I remember may isang beses na we're working, let's say, with, in Mindoro with a agricultural community. There was a group of um, uh, pig growers, no? pork growers, who were asking me, Sir, what are we going to do? Kasi nag- nagbabackyard growing kami ng baboy. Pero pag binenta namin, ang presyo, hindi namin ang baba ng presyo minsan. No? Kasi um, minsan, hindi mo makokontrol yung price ng pork. So, explain ko sa kanila na, well, kasi minsan, um, hindi mo rin maiwasan may imported pork na dumarating. Minsan, dagsaan ng import, mabagsak yung presyo by the time nag-harvest ka. Kasi yung binibenta mo, halos pareho lang naman yung lahat ng pork na pinuproduce ng malalaki, pati yung imported, gano'n na rin pareho rin. So, walang differentiation. I said, pero, kung mag-focus ka ng pork naman na maliit na yung production mo, pero organic naman siya, saka ma- magandang quality talaga, iba yung, ano, iba yung quality ng pork. Malamang, and then you work with a company like us na merong gano'ng klaseng alignment, no? na gano'n din ang gusto namin na yung ibibenta namin sa store namin kasi maliit lang naman kami compared to a supermarket, gusto rin namin na yung pork namin magkakaiba din sa pork na nahahanap mo sa supermarket. At may storya kami. Bakit yung pork namin magkakaiba doon sa iba? So, I give you an example. We have a project with Father uh, Lobrigo of Bicol. He, he runs... Yeah, Jovic. Father Jovic. Oh. So, he has... We're, we're doing a project with him on organic pork. Kasi yung pork niya, which he feeds with organic feeds, mas masarap naman talaga. Iba yung marbling. Iba yung, iba yung texture. Iba yung amoy. Iba yung itsura. So, may usapan kami ni Father Jovic na i-expand niya yung production ng organic pork niya kasi malabak, palagi niyang problema. O nga, naproduce ako ng organic pork. Mas mahal naman yung cost to produce ko. Pag binibenta ko sa palengke, hindi naman nila binibili ng mas mataas na presyo. So sabi ko, dito mo na lang ibenta sa amin, we'll pay you a higher price. No? Kasi ibibenta naman namin niya. Kasi yung mga customers naman namin, bumunta sa tindahan, iba naman ang hinahanap nila. No? So they're willing to pay a higher price for for a much better product. So, minsan, yung alignment lang naman ang importante yung finding the right partners. Yeah. So, um, we, we also have a success story with the Fisher Folk in Sablayan. Uh, tuna grower sila. So, tinuturuan namin sila na paano mag-grow ng, uh, mag, mag-fish ng tuna na sustainable, traceable and sustainable. So, this was a project with the USAID na kailangan mag-certify lahat ng bangka nila na sustainable seafood. May record keeping sila paano nila when they caught it, how they caught it. And they make sure that there is a that the it does not deplete the population of the yellow uh, yellowfin tuna no, in that area. And I'm very happy to say that we've helped that they became the first uh, certified sustainable tuna in the country. And now we're selling that in our deli, and it's one of our biggest selling products. Mm-hmm. And not only that, we are exporting it to Europe. Kasi sa Europe gusto nila certified tuna lang yung binibili nila. Okay. So we're able to pay them a higher price. I think we export now close to five or six tons a month of this certified tuna coming from supplier. So uh, you can really see here that marketing plays a very important part of also uplifting the value of products of the poor. Um, it is. A, um, I think we also have to kind of think of a different model. That it is not always just producing the same things, but it's also empowering them. Mm-hmm. to sort of create differentiation doon sa ginagawa nila. 
yeah. teaching them how to be passionate about what they do, what they produce, and to come up with the best product that they can possibly do, which which is different from a large company that is producing it in mass, low cost to produce, pero the quality naman is not the same as the smaller yeah. Yeah. production. So, so this is kind of the way we're approaching it. Now we're going to we look for partners uh, uh, who are willing to go the extra mile to produce something a bit different and, and, and uh, a much higher quality product. And we're also willing to pay them yeah. a higher price because the customers who come to our store also understand that they're here to buy a more premium, higher quality product. Yeah. And I guess June also, no, we, we need to also bear in mind the export market, you know. Correct. And yeah. the export market. We can, we can compete, diba, if we want to. No? Yeah, I mean I, I mean we have we have like um, for example, we sell here a uh, a pili nut made by an amazing lady. She makes her pili nut na naka in room na ube, coffee, and no ubus palagi. <laughs> no, so palagi sinasabi namin sa kanya, i-expand mo yun. And minsan may mga customers kami na pumunta dito ng mga foreigner. Try nila, sabi nila, saan po mapipili ito? This is a, you know, we can export this, di ba? Yeah. So, yung mga ganong klaseng story, ah, yes, definitely may mga produkto talaga tayo sa Pilipinas na if we produce it with great passion and uh, high quality. Quality, no? High quality. We can certainly export it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, June and, and Jamira, no? yun yung challenge. Kasi ako, I work with Caritas Philippines, no? And, uh, one of the things we want to strengthen this this year, no, because we're doing this crowd. We have this Ale Kappa expanded uh, fund campaign. It's crowdfunding, but we want to raise at least for the first two years. We want to raise half a billion through uh, no, annual giving, five hundred pesos a year lang, no. But that's to support all of these initiatives that will help the poor communities, no. And most certainly, we're we're looking at. Of course, education is crucial, and we want to focus on out-of-school youth. And then, of course, uh, sa health, June, because of malnutrition, the stunting. So we want to work on food security. But together with food security is livelihood. Eh? You know, you cannot simply run feeding programs to <laughs> to you know? You only run feeding programs as an emergency response no? to malnutrition. But after after the 1,000 days of, of helping a child get the proper nutrition, you need to teach the parents how to, to create food security. Actually, nakakatawa dahil ang goal talaga is food security. Livelihood is just to support the food security. Yes. You know? So this is perfect. In fact, I was telling Jamir, I, June, June and I were in the baptism of, ano, of Isa Calzado. Wow. Yes. Because the reception, which I was unfortunate I could not attend, was in uh, Pardon My French. You know? That's where I talked to June. June, sabi ko, perfect. Can I, can I talk to you? At first, I sabi ko, can I talk to you about our livelihood? And it so happened, June, that Father Jovic is our consultant in Caritas Field oh. for Social Enterprise. So I think, you know, talking about, <laughs> talking about the lighting of stars, June, this is this. Yeah. <laughs> Kasi Jun, part of our philosophy in, in Caritas Philippines is ang question namin sa programs or goal or dream, number one, sustainable. Number two, replicable. Number three, because it's replicable, sustainable, scaling up. And, and given your experience, is, uh, given all of these possible livelihood programs in, in, with the fisher folk, with the farmers, no, with 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 mga chicken and, and pork growers, is what is the future for that? What is the future? I think the future is very high because kumpitinan mo rin. We have to also take a look at it from a context, Father Tito. Who is the future consumer? Okay. Kasi ang future consumer ay yung mga bata, di ba? Yung Correct. mga yung mga sabi natin thirty to thirty years old and above. Mm -hmm. uh, every year, taon-taon, dumalaki rin yung kita nila. Yes. Diba? And the Philippines is one of those unique countries in the world where we have a very young population. Tinatawag na natin na golden demographics. We, we have this rare opportunity na 70% of our population is 30 years old and below. Yes. So ito yung future consumers. At saka, 
pag ganun kang age kasi, mabata yung mga, ano mo, very productive yan eh. Kasi nasa prime pa sila, nagtatrabaho pa sila. Tapos, as they earn more money, natural naman ng tao, as you earn more, gusto mong bumili ng mas magandang halaga na quality na yes. produkto, di ba? So, pagkain lamang, umbis na chicken lang palagi kinakain mo, sabi mo, ay, mag-steak na rin ako. Kasi mga ka-afford na rin ako, eh, di ba? Or gusto ako mag-try ng cheese, gusto ko mag-try ng ganyan, ganyan, di ba? Gano'n naman ng um, ano eh. So, makikita natin na ang future talaga is people will be demanding better quality products. That's the natural, uh, uh, that's why many many um, people are quite excited about the Philippine economy because we are um, seen as one of the fastest growing middle income market mm-hmm. in the next 20 years, the Philippines. Ngayon, ano naman ang mindset ng mga batang consumer. Unlike tayo, father, medyo very technology savvy sila. Hindi na sila naloloko eh. Di ba? Kasi bibili sila ng produkto, titignan nila ano yung ingredients, titignan nila saan ba ito gawa, makakacheck sila sa internet kung totoo ba yung sinasabi na ganito talaga yan. Unlike tayo dati, pag sinabi sa commercial na ganyan yan, naniniwala na kaagad tayo eh. Sila yes. hindi sila naniniwala eh. They, they look at they care about where the product comes from. Yes. Is that an yes. environmentally friendly company? Yes. Ano ba yung values ng company? Yun yung mga bagong mga kabataan ngayon eh. Very idealistic sila. Maganda. Yeah. So, ibig, yeah. and, and bakit yan exciting para sa mga mga producers like sinasabi mo nga yung mga food security yung gagawa ng mga mga nasa agribusiness or farmer? Ibig sabihin, mm-hmm. Ang mga future consumers, ang gusto nila bibilhin is yung produkto na may storya. Yung correct, produkto correct. na may, may halaga, na mayroong pinanggagalingan na kung ako gagawa ko ng isang produkto, hindi ako nagpupulyot, hindi ako environmentally friendly ako, at saka hindi ako gumagawa ng shortcut. Talaga po, ano sinasabi ko dun sa ingredients ko? Talagang totoo, di ba? Ito, free, ano na ito kay Javier? So, ito ang packaging niya. No, so, tapos, uh, but but June, mga... if I may comment, look at the packaging. Ang ganda oh, ng packaging. So, I mean, this is a social enterprise product. Yeah, it's world yeah. class, di ba? Yeah. Hindi mean, tayo, hindi ito matatalo sa Twinings. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> kita mo naman talaga eh. So, si okay. June, di ba? Hindi, hindi, sabi, kasabihan nga natin, hindi tayo mapapahiya. Hindi tayo mapapahiya. At saka kailangan talaga mag, mangarap tayo Correct. Okay, okay, okay magsabi na, hey, nasa Pilipinas lang ako, oh, hindi ko kaya makipaglaban sa producer sa Italy or sa Spain o yeah. sa France. Kaya natin yun, di ba? And napaka-creative na natin. At saka, we're also very blessed eh. So as a country, you know, we have you know, a lot of uh, things that we have here that are not found elsewhere. So, yeah, but yeah. we have to have a, we have to have a global mind. Global mindset in a sense na, hindi ko kailangan na complicated. Ibig sabihin, let's go do something of quality. Hindi yung, ah, okay na yan, di ba? And, and June, I think, that is where your your efforts, uh, your efforts are very important, di ba? Kasi, uh, for example, Jamir, yung, yung mga yung mga IPs, di ba? And people in Kalawan. And this is not to, ano, hindi ito para mang mata. But imagine if they did not meet you and they, you did not connect them with, with June's project, ano? Kasi I think never in their wildest dreams na magiging mag-export, di ba? Magiging global, I mean, compete. Actually, global, yes. Ano, no, product. Yes, Father. In, actually, parang, of course, dumaan po tayo lahat sa pandemic. And then when the business really went down with it, there's really no clear future because we've been supporting, you know, about 20 to 30 women team makers. And that it was really a big, push na we never to imagine that there will be a resurgence in the production from the maker to the farm until we had of course the partnership with with the tough foods but more than that it's there's an opening of more retail doors uh, actually what's so strategic with with uh, PYC is it's actually on the distribution end of the value chain because yeah. mostly when we talk about the value chain model diba parang raw material production manufacturing, and then sales distribution. In the end, the final gatekeeper talaga of, of the products would be the distributors. Eh. 
And it takes also a conscious, mindful distributor to know, to provide social and ethical procurement. And yeah. at the same time, have not necessarily a bias, but being mindful of using their business to source products at the low end, at the low end of the value chain. So mm. actually, what's 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 good with, I, I totally get that with Sir June, yung, yung effect to sa atin is when you have a distributor or a retailer company who values the story, who values the mission, and at the same time, who values the price. Because ang right. napapansin ko, Father, sa mga livelihood project, pressured agad kasi mga small producers natin, whether that's fish, a farming or canning companies or food products to compete immediately and mag, mag price war ba? Like, dapat mura agad. Mm-hmm. Eh, honestly, in the price war sa simula pa lang when we have China here in the global market, talo na tayo to start with. It's, it's, <laughs> it's price it's, war. Wala, wala, wala na talaga tayong laban. To, to, like for, yes. for us, a tea company who had never produced in the Philippines green tea, black tea, it's just all 100% important and we can it will never it will take us millennia to be cost competitive so mm-hmm. kung labanan lang natin ay price it's it's a losing game but yeah, however yeah. if you find distributing partners buyers who can appreciate not just your price but at the same time who doesn't chip in you because they also see value in what you're doing and not just in terms of your story but in terms also of your product quality yeah. Then I think that's a good partnership to deal with. So when we have, for example, One World Delhi, who really both appreciate their products and make use of it into a creative service to the customers, hindi rin nahihirapan yung mga local uh, enterprises like us to compete yeah. because and they can appreciate what, Jameer, the price. I agree with June. Eh, na I never thought of it that way, to be honest, June. No? But tama, no? in planning all of these livelihood projects, ano ba yung future market, no? And, and I agree with June yung kabataan, di ba, Jameer, na talagang, alam mo, June, correct me if I'm wrong, ah, ang kabataan willing to spend extra. But kung aligned yan sa advocacy nila, sa yes. kwento nila, which is the environment, correct. number one is the environment and healthy lifestyle, they, will, they, they are willing to pay a little bit more. Eh. In fact, yes, yes. In fact without, without mentioning uh, stores or brands, no? look at the most successful stores dito. Um, there's one store that they never thought they will grow that big, but now they have hundreds of branches. And part of the secret is kasi yung, yung brand kilalang laging may advocacy. We buy from, from these farmers. We buy from... And people, I think, support them in great part because of that. Sabi mga Jun, may kwento eh. Di ba? Hindi yeah. naman, it's not enough lang na, oy. Bibili ako dyan kasi naaawa ako. Kasi yes, yes, not pity buying. Value yun. for money pa rin, di ba? Uh, importante na maganda yung quality. Hindi nga rin, yes. sabihin ko lang, no? ito kay Jamir, di ba? Tanglag siya. Ito kay lemongrass, di ba? Pero pag na-try ko naman yung lemongrass niya, makikita mo na hindi ito karaniwang lemongrass. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ang dami niyang inais- iniisip na nilalagay dito together with the lemongrass na ang sarap nung combination. Or ito, uh, pandan, di ba? Mm. And nabibenta siya. Pero hindi naman, hindi ko naman siya nasabi dito. Bilhin mo ito kasi social Kawawa enter- ba- kasi social Kawawa, enterprise. Uh, self pity buying. Kawawa self-pity. ito. Di ba? Kasi tulungan natin ito kasi mga yeah. mahirap ito. Wala kami uh, sinabi dyan sa store namin na ganyan eh. Pero <laughs> the product speaks for itself. Kasi pag na-try nila, o oh, nga, pero hindi ito pangkariniwang pandan. Makikita yeah. na na Kung sino man yung ginawa nito, pinag-isipan, di ba? Yes. Masarap talaga siya. So, yun lang, yung, yung ano, na, what you call this, na kailangan talaga, ang pag-iisip natin is, huwag tayong magbenta dahil, dahil sa awa, di ba? Uh. Menta tayo kasi we feel proud. Yeah. At ang, ang ano ko eh, parang pinaghirapan ko ito eh. Di ba? Yung ibang farmer, kunyari sa baboy, nag-feed lang siya ng, bibili lang siya ng feeds na commercial, i-feed lang niya, madali sa kanya kasi i-feed lang siya, buksan lang niya yung sako. Pero itong particular other farmer naman na organic, iba naman yung pamamaraan niya to feed. Pero yung baboy naman niya, pag, 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 pag na-produce niya, binibenta niya, pag kinatay mo, makikita mo yung quality ng marbling niya, yeah, yeah. makikita mo yung amoy, ama, ano mo, iba yung amoy, iba yung color, pagluto mo talaga. Iba yung lasa. 
paglasa, ibibenta mo siya ng 10-15% higher, yung mga ka-afford, mababalue nilang, bibili nila yun. So parang ganun lang yung mindset ng ano na even if you're a small producer, if you put a lot of love and pride in your in what you do, you can be viable. Huwag no? mm-hmm. ka makipaglaban doon sa sobrang laki ang production nila na murang-mura na eh. Yes. Kasi yes. otherwise, hindi ka, makaka, hindi ka makakalaban. Di ba? Kahit sabihin mo sa kanya na tulungan mo na lang ako, bilhin mo ito. Sabihin ng buyer, o sige, ngayon, bilhin ko yan. Pero hindi naman niya bibilhin palaki. Kasi <laughs> otherwise, sabihin niya, parang, di ba? Parang bak- Diba? Hindi naman siya pipili ng pipili dahil palagi lang siyang naawa. Naawa. <laughs> Oo, oh, diba? Yeah. Ayaw, ayaw mo rin ng ganoon, diba? Na parang, oh, sige, ah, pang-awa, ano mo na lang, awa mo na lang sa akin. Yan yeah, ang ano, John, diba? Yan ang immediately hindi sustainable. Not sustainable. Sustainable, yes. sustainable oh. at all. Oh, oh. Oh. At saka, we have to realize also that there are big producers who can produce it cheaper than us. So kahit anong gagawin natin, hindi tayo pwede makipaglaban sa kanila. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Differentiation is the key, di ba? Yeah. Paano tayo magkakaiba? Diba? And, and differentiation with quality, di ba? Quality. quality is the differentiating factor. Differentiation. differentiation. Oo. And, and June, ano, no? um, you know, one of the things is that ano, I, was, I was reading this, um, yung projections ng, uh, I think, JP Moore, ah, Goldman Sachs. That in 2075, based on GDP trajectory, we will be the 14th biggest economy in the world. No? Correct. So, that is driven by our uh, demographics. Yeah. Sabi nga natin na yung Catholic Church stand na uh, bawal ang birth control, di ba? which economies were attacking before, eh mukhang yun pa, pala ang naging saver natin. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, and, and in fact, uh, anyway, this is another topic altogether. Uh, that's one of the worries of the, of, because our our birth rate has really dropped below replacement rate. But that's another topic altogether. Okay. But, but, but sa akin, June lang kasi, um, my 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 question baka ito kasi livelihood and, and and social enterprise will be a major player here. Eh. My concern is okay, GDP natin ta- lalaki ang ating economy lalaki but one of the topics we talked about last week and I've always believed in is uh the trickle down ec- economic model doesn't work, no? Inequality the, the, inequality of wealth, inequality of wealth of access to resources. No? So how how what what is the role of what you're doing in trying to alleviate that inequality? No, of course, for me, alam mo naman June, my 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 advocacy is education, so I'm trying to do that. No, with with out of school youth. No, na uh, but but what do you think will be the role that ano uh, entrepreneurs, social enterprise people, businessmen like you, June, can 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 play? No, in order to address that inequality. I I think um you know. My father taught me uh, that entrepreneurship can be very noble if it's mm-hmm. used for the right purpose. Meaning, when you do business, um, not simply to enrich yourself, but to provide opportunities for others, and uh, it, it, it's it's a it's a cycle where if you do something good, uh, people value that good, and your business grows. The more good you can do, mm-hmm. right? But it's always from a context of how is your business helping other people? Now, I think entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurs have this amazing opportunity and responsibility to be a catalyst also, to be to help as well with this issue of um, income inequality. Now, yeah. in our own little way, what we're trying to do, providing access of the markets, meaning we create a network of stores like One World Delhi where we provide a platform for small producers to uh, promote their products in our store, for us to help market their products and pay them a fair price uh, and, and, help, and help tell their story to the consumers and also help in our own way of making consumers aware of the differentiation between certain food products. Mm-hmm. It's our own little way of helping um, bridge that gap. Yeah. So, so that we can also provide um, 
the smaller uh, uh, entrepreneurs, the the, the 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 people who are who are the poorer producers, have access to markets where if they put more effort into what they do, they can get a higher value for their produce. So this is this is one way um, for us to help, and I'm sure there are so many other entrepreneurs out there who are also thinking the same way. Yeah. So the good thing lang with all this, because at the end of the day, hindi mo naman, you cannot force consumers, you cannot dictate to consumers what to buy, di ba? Mm-hmm. But good, the, my my big my big ano lang para optimism stems from the fact that young consumers now are very different. They're very socially aware. Okay. They're very they're very knowledgeable. They're very educated. They believe they're very they're very idealistic in their buying choices. Mm-hmm. But tayo before in our generation, I'm guilty of saying that we were very functional buyers, diba? In sense, sobrang practical. Bakit ako bibili ng ganyan eh? Diba? Pare, ano lang yan. But now the, the the buying decisions of a young consumer is very different and that that goes over well for um, for producers who who have this mission also of putting out things there that yeah. are higher in quality and have a differentiated story mm-hmm. and this is all this is this works well for small mga small businesses eh. kasi minsan yung mga malalaking business mahihirapan din sila to do the kinds of things that small businesses do. Yeah. Correct. Diba? Correct. So, yeah. Kasi, hindi yan madali eh, to do something with great love and care. So, sabi nga ni Jamir na, uh, alam na namin ni Jamir na itong Chalaya, for example, I'm sure it will not be as big as a Lipton tea. Mm-hmm. We already know that. Diba? But, in our own way, we know that if we produce a tea of very high quality, we will maybe have one or two percent of the market we're happy with that because if you have one of two percent of a global market versus having forty percent, uh, that is already good for us, right? Yeah. We also have to under we also just have to understand that you know there are things that you aspire for, but you have to balance it off with reality. That mm-hmm. uh, if you want to stay true to your values or to your mission. There are also certain things that you have to give up, diba? Kasi um, maximizing profit may not necessarily be the end goal. But as mm-hmm. long as you're financially sustainable, yeah. diba? Na, na you can continue to grow sustainably uh, and, 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 and be able to, uh, what you call this, uh, have a long-term existence in your business. That's okay, right? Even if I'm not as profitable as the other guy, Correct. that's okay, right? We set our own, para we have to set our own standards of what what our goals are. Mm-hmm. But going back to your question about income inequality, um, really, in a way, I think entrepreneurs do have a big responsibility of, para providing access, uh, providing access to uh, the poorer producers of. Um, markets um, that will allow them to uh, sell their product and also provide them the support, the education, the marketing know-how, yeah. uh, assistance in terms of helping them uplift uh, the quality of their product. Yeah, yeah. And J- Jameer, you want to add yes. to Actually, Father, about the income inequality, that's a good question then. Of course, um, Income inequality is always a multi-generational question then. Eh. In, in my case, uh, we're dealing with urban poor here who were relocated to a rural resettlement which have no assets at all to talk about. No land, no probably, no any physical uh, home infrastructure. So zero assets talaga. And I, we've been, at least for this community, most challenging compared to other rural communities na by Papa. No, may, may, in the indigenous community, they have their ancestral domains. So I guess one thing that I've, I've witnessed with Sir June's company, you know, through, the, through the partnership also is, after the time, Sir June, we allow ourselves to go to the harder areas to develop businesses. And we, we recognize that difficulty in terms of this setting up the business. Permits, assets, capital, transportation, logistics. We don't, we, we in, 
parang we're not frustrated immediately. Kasi ko a typical business, magko-cost minimize agad yan eh. Na ilagay na lang natin ito sa Manila or anong pinakamadaling supply chain setup. But there is a recognition to extend the business operations to difficult areas, not just for Chalaya. I believe we have, sir, di ba, in Sablayan, the rice seeds goes to other to Mindanao communities to source the rice. So that's one, I think, sir, sir na ginagawa ng Tao Foods is we extend the business operation to more to, to areas where it's needed. And when we build businesses here, there's actually access not just to market, but also access to asset and investments. Somehow, yung trickle down na sinasabi is the mere fact that we are investing some assets in this community like factory mm-hmm. or even farm farm asset development is nag-ripple talaga siya. Kasi uh, mm-hmm. we are not we're not intimidated by, for example po sa amin, sa Kalawan, sir, a father, parang recently na nagkaroon ng kuryente at access sa malinis na tubig and kuryente pa lang. So, it's hard mm-hmm. to put business. After so many years, ha? After yes, so... diba? Diyan sa Kalawan, para pong, parang pandemic time na nagtalagaran karoon ng full electricity yung uh, buong community or access to pipe water. So, a typical business will not put it there kasi ayaw na niya isipin yung mga cost of infrastructure. But, mm-hmm. For, for for small enterprises, social enterprises, we take on those challenges uh, because we do really want to reach out to those without access to business. So what we're doing, the surgeon, is really to come up also with creative financing that is also both good for the community and also for the business unit. Now, when we try to decide and invest for improving the production from the, for even land or or a factory, we, we put it on the community. Actually, sa amin, sir, we have a decentralized uh, production process, di ba, Sir June, where we even plan to decentralize uh, drying to, to the community, not just because it's, it's, it adds up more income to the community, yung value adding, mm-hmm. but it actually speaks of point, the quality. That's why when we want, we want, we want to, yung pinag-usapan namin ni Sir June, if you experience our tea, may freshness talaga because when you decentralize the production to, to the farming community. Uh, hindi siya, siya mass-produce. <laughs> Opo. At fresh talaga yung lasa. Yun naman yung effect kapag decentralized din po yung, uh, yung supply yeah. chain natin. Of course, that comes with challenges na uh, we have to take on some infrastructure and logistical constraints. Pero trabaho po yun ng social entrepreneur to make the business uh, happen in, in difficult communities. So it's, it's a very ex- exciting field. I mean, I, I can see a lot of... Especially ako, as I will help the, the livelihood of Caritas Philippines. Ano? Any closing words, June and Jamir, as we wrap up our episode? Really very, very wonderful episode. Thank you very much. No? But and if, I'll give you the final words. No? So, June, ikaw ni last. Ako na muna. Sige, yeah, ikaw, Jamir. We <laughs> can <laughs> end. No? So we can listen. Actually, it, it, it's, it's something I, I would like to leave a message of excitement and and, and wonder and joy. Uh, kasi tama, this year, sir, yeah, like, we, we felt this is an exciting time for Philippine economy at the ground level. Where, from the nothing retail revenge, then even the pandemic, we, we, we kind of felt it. Um, mm-hmm. There is a big opportunity and there is a big promise, but comes with promise, comes with taking care of this. Kumbaga, uh, I believe we will bulk up the population demographics, pero malaki. Um, we have the OFW phenomena. We still have the, the social media, which makes as globally known, our products. So it's, but at the same time, we, we, we also still have a Filipino diaspora continuously going out, our talent or importing. So I, I guess it's both an excitement and at the same time, a more opportunity to take care of the economic potential of the country. And I, I, tama, this is, sir, na, I share the same na for small entrepreneurs, I think we should also believe first that we're good enough. And we're good enough because we take care of our product and we, we have true story to tell with our products. And it's a matter of time and it's a matter of networking and building connection to find those companies who share these values because we are now seeing medium to big companies who also have a different corporate value. And it's a matter of finding this type of company who would know these values of social entrepreneurship, of sustainability, and also always giving back to them. Thank you, Jamir. June, we'll give you the final words. Uh, yeah, well, I, I guess uh, for me, uh, I just feel it's a blessing uh, I have this opportunity to uh, build the business with a sense of purpose. Um, and it's also a call out to a lot of young entrepreneurs also think of it that way. Uh, it's more, it's harder, no? it's more challenging. 
because you're doing things that are not the ordinary. You're taking a different road. Um, however, I do believe in the long term that if you build a business based on a value system where what you're selling um, is, not, is something that is genuine, authentic, full of passion, um, with a very high quality and uh, you know, and where practices are done with a good purpose, that are ethical, fair, and allow for wealth to be distributed rather than to be concentrated on a few. I think if, if we build on those building blocks, I do really believe that your business will have a higher value in the future. That's my, that's my uh, personal belief and aspiration because I know when you do the right things over time, um, you will create more value out of it. Uh, very, very well said. And ako, maraming, maraming, maraming salamat, Jamir and June. And I hope we can we can carry another conversation sometime in the future. No? So maraming, maraming salamat, Jamir, June. And I hope sa ating mga kaproyekto, you've picked up a lot. And I hope marami ang na-inspire sa inyo no? to to really get into producing what you're proud of, what is what you're passionate about. Yeah, mga heirloom recipes sa mga lolo't lola ninyo. Work on it. Build it up. Make it make it world class. Quality, no? So maraming salamat, Jun. Maraming salamat, Jamir. And mga proyekto, maraming salamat po. Ito ang Proyekto Pilipino. Maraming salamat. Proyekto Pilipino. Thank you, Father Tito. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Father. Thank you.